Let's start the next and last session of the uh, Congress. Uh, if you prefer to talk in English for this session, uh, because we have uh, two English presentations, uh, or the presentation in English, uh, and we have uh, two participants, uh, and then the uh, first participant, uh, Eva Nilde Rofina from Mozambique. Uh, she was um, she was graduated in international relations and diplomacy from uh, the university in Mozambique, and she is currently studying her masters in international security and terrorism at Nevşehir University in Turkey. Uh, she's very interested in the areas of international security, climate change, and uh, uh, terrorism. And then uh, the title of her uh, presentation is The Cause and Effect Relationship Between Climate Change and Food Security. Actually, the climate change uh, has uh, multi-disciplinary uh, or multi-dimensional uh, problem uh, around the world, as you know. Uh, there, there are a lot of linkage between the climate change and the food security, energy security, uh, etc. Because of that, the link between the climate change and the food security is uh, one of the crucial dimensions of the climate change. And uh, she has a case, the case of Southern Africa. Um, if you don't mind, uh, you can uh, start your presentation, Evanilde. But there is a time limitation of 15 minutes. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if uh, you would abide, uh, abide by uh, this time limitation. Um. Uh, if you, if you are if you are ready you can start we can see your uh, sharing your your material okay so everybody can see my screen right yeah and uh, the video is also not stopping <laughs> because i can only see these parts i can't see if it's stopping or not my mm -hmm. uh, apart from that powerpoint presentation my video is okay. it ongoing Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you so much for this opportunity, for the introduction, and um, for everybody that is here. I'm going to start my presentation on the cause and effect relationship between climate change and food security, taking the case of South Africa as the study case analysis. Um, I'm going to do my best to finish, finish it within 15 minutes. So basically, these are the contents of this presentation. We are going to make an introduction to the concepts of climate change, food security, and so on. But why talking about climate change? It's, uh, it has been widely explored. The, topic, the climate change topic has been widely explored lately, and there has been a securitization of this topic, taking climate change related topics and bringing it to the security, international security area, not only for food security, but also in the political view, in conflict, uh, conflict studies view, and so much more, which means that climate change has. Um, has been winning more and more attention in the international arena from researchers to polit politic decision makers too. Speaking about climate change, according to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is the main, um, main instrument on climate change internationally, is basically talking about changes of climate that are derived from the human activity. This is basically results from our, acti from our, our um, intervention on the nature as human beings. For example, in the last years, we have been assisting a massive deforestation practice it is we cut for we, we cut down forests to to build industries railways houses and so much more and this whole process has been contributing to the 
increase of the green greenhouse gas emissions that leads to climate change. So to talk about the Southern African region is basically talk, talk about the southernmost region in Africa, which is composed by 16 countries and SADC, SADC, Southern African Development Community is the international organization uh, that represents this region. This region is a basic example that even though a country or a region has low contributions in the global green, greenhouse gas emissions, it can be um, a huge victim of the increase in these emissions. Why? Because in Southern Africa, there are low emissions of this gas that contributes to climate change, but it's internationally one of the regions that is more vulnerable to climate change and it, it has been suffering uh, the most from this uh, from this phenomenon. But our topic is basically climate change effect on food security. What is food security? Uh, food security is accepted as the capacity or ability of a certain state to ensure food availability and access to all of its citizens. So to talk about food security, we must uh, meet or we must pay attention to these four um, factors. The first one is availability, which is basically an, the overall availability of food within a country or in a market or the market capacity to answer to the food demand. And also we have access that remains to both physical access and economic access to food. And uh, after this, we have utilization that is basically it, it, it's, uh, it's about the capability of our bodies to make usage of the food that we have access to or make sure that this food that we have access to answers to our nutritional um, needs. For example, I may have access to food, but if I am unable to make usage of that food due to diseases or other situations, I am not on a food security situation, but in a food insecurity situation. And also stability, which is basically the capability of a market to ensure food access during different times. If today I have food, but after some period there is no food, there is no available food on the market, then we are going to talk about food insecurity. For there to be food security, we must have these four um, factors. We must ensure these four factors. So in Southern Africa, in the last years, there has been a problem like climate change has been affecting negatively food security in the region. Why? Because it has been affecting mostly agriculture pr practices that represents more than 50% of the requirements for the region to meet food security. Um, as I was making an introduction before, talk about food security in the Southern African region is mostly to talk about agriculture and fishery because first, Southern Africa is a coastal region and lots of the coastal, of the population that lives near, near to the coastal area, they rely on fishery as their source of income and the more than 70% of the population residing in rural area relies on agriculture as their main source of income. But due to climate change, we have been assisting lots of extreme weather events, water scarcity, droughts, floods, uh, tropical cyclones, and much more that have been destroying cropland that have been affecting negatively sea life. So automatically, this leads to, um, to problems on income sources for the population that rely on these two as their source and income to be to have access and consequently to food security too. For example, du during the 2015 and 2016 El Nino Pacific um, warming waters, the region, uh, the region lived the worst drought in, 30, in the last 35 years and there was a loss of 24% of the overall cereal production in the area. 
some countries, these countries as well, these countries, they declared national emergency situation due to food insecurity. And there has been eight out of nine provinces in South Africa that were responsible for 90% of the overall maize production. They also declared a national emergency situation because of climate change, uh, because of the problems in the production that are derivated for, for, from climate change. Um, basically, as I made an introduction before, climate change has been contributing negatively to the food availability in the region. There is a direct relationship between climate change and agriculture, for example. The temperatures and precipitation, in this case rain, they are really important for agriculture production, but due to the rays of the weather, like there has been an extreme, extreme increase in the heat in the region, um, lots of crop land are being are lost as well as lots of production is also being lost. Um, there was during the 2019 tropical cyclone Idai, more than 8,000 hectares of crop land were destroyed. We can make like we can predict the amount or quantity of crop products that were lost also during this whole process. Um, basically, climate change can also be understood as a trait multiplier. Why? Because if uh, the population that relies on agriculture for their just like to live, if they lose their source of income, they will be in a situation of more poverty and automatically they will be leaded to a food insecurity situation. And this is not only about one, but about lots of people in the same region. So it multiplies the available and uh, negative situations that are already available in the region. And the extreme weather events, droughts, water scarcity, floods, tropical cyclones and much more, they have a negative impact on the on the agricultural productivity as well as the fishery in the region. During the 20 during the years 20 during 2019, uh, the region experienced two cyclones at the at almost the same time. These were Idai Cyclone Idai and Cyclone Kennedy that not only killed lots of people but also destroyed lots of crop land lots of production and uh, much more zambia experienced a change on the rain season zimbabwe experienced the severe drought in the country in the last years and um, and uh, there was an increment on food insecurity from 23 million during this season to 51 million in this season it's more than a hundred percent. On the other side, by increasing, by rising sea temperatures, it makes the sea life near to the coastal area to move to more deep waters, more cool water, cooler waters, and this uh, implies a loss in the fishery, in the in fishery activities in that specific region. So, people on coastal and inland uh, areas they leave a reduction on their income and their access, their ability to buy food will also be affected leading to food insecurity. But as I explained it before, unfortunately climate change has been having a very negative impact on food security in the region. And uh, the countries of the region, they are aware of this. So what have they been doing to reduce or mitigate the effects of climate change on their food security. Basically, the countries have been making research and investing on drought resistant crop varieties as well as other climate, um, climate smart agricultural practices, such as, for example, uh, investing on seeds. Malawi has been investing, um, widely investing on the research and in, on the research and usage of drought resistant seeds like maize, cassava, to ensure that even though the, the crop, the agriculture land is being lost, there will be seeds that are able to fight these changes in the 
in the sector and ensure that there will be product productivity even in these different types of land. There is also agroforestation that's basically a combination of uh, agriculture in a forest or a tree related environment. Um, and the country of the region, they have been investing a lot on these practices. There is afforestation and reforestation in Mozambique. Mozambique have been <clears throat> widely victim of cyclones and during this time, erosion and lots of forests or trees are lost. So they are basically investing on creating new forests as well as replacing the ones that were lost during these uh, extreme weather events. On the other side, we have community-based adaptation projects in Tanzania that consist basically on a community education on climate change, as well as teaching them how can they keep on practicing agriculture in a more environment-friendly way, like rotation of cultures, using organic fertilizers, and much more, as well as low invest, invest, if investment losses going to this production. On the other side, we have the African Development Bank that has been providing financial aid to local farmers for them to invest on irrigation systems and other um, me mechanisms that will reduce their dependence on traditional means, making it possible for them to keep product producing and adjusting to these climate changes. The World Food Program has basically given more help during emergency situations like when a cyclone or a, a, a climate hazard happens in that emergency situation they provide for the population whatever they need to adjust and keep on moving with their life so basically um by investing on climate smart policies the countries aim to mitigate climate change and ensure food security in the region um the usage of renewable energy, conservation, agriculture, agroforestry, and uh, other techniques are being widely explored by the countries of the region. Uh, on the other side, when it comes to fishery, uh, resilient fishery management, such as, for example, seasonal, seasonal closure of fishery areas, there is a certain time that is forbidden to do fishery. There are certain spaces that during a certain time they they make it they restrict the fishery quantity and things like that to make sure that they will have time to reproduce, grow, and uh, there won't be a scarcity or an over um, overfishing in that region. At the same time, they have been investing in capacity building and trainings to local communities to raise their awareness on how they can fight climate change. Um, I'm almost done. <laughs> so when it comes to case studies and success stories of climate related mitigation policies, we have the building climate resilient of small holders farming in Mozambique. This basically helped not only to raise the awareness of the population on climate change, but also to teach them how they can how they can um, keep producing, but in a sustainable way. For example, what is the importance of rotation of cultures, using organic fertilizers, and uh, other other sustainable ways of keep doing agriculture. So there is also this project, Climate Resilient Zero Budget Natural Farming, that taught local communities in Zimbabwe how to practice agriculture with uh, less investment, like using yet still using the traditional ways of agriculture, reducing their need of buying um, modern mechanisms or irrigation systems to um, provide support on the agricultural practices by low costs, but keep on doing, keep on uh, keep on practicing agriculture and ensuring productivity even though there is climate change. There is also Southern Africa's marine protected areas, as I explained it, explained it before here in the fisheries management implementation systems, they have been created areas that are is restricted or forbidden to do fishery during specific times to ensure the reproduction and development or grow of fishery um, of fishery 
of sea life in that region. There is Mozambique Sustainable Fishery Initiatives, as well as the countries they have been collaborating on illegal fishing, sharing information and other things that are relevant to protect um, fishery during, during specific seasons, as well as they have also been sharing information on climate friendly agriculture practices as well. Um, so basically, extreme weather events, they have been having a negative impact in agriculture and fishery in the southern African region. And these two uh, factors, agriculture and fishery, they are the keys to achieve food security in the region. But luckily, uh, the states, in the, the governments individually and also in the international arena, they have been investing and developing more knowledge on how to mitigate clim climate change uh, effects on food security so so that they would adjust and keep on ensuring that, that there is food security for its citizens in the region even though climate change and food security nexus it's a very important topic in the region there have, there have been less works related to this topic so further research on this topic will be welcomed. This, uh, this is a kind of an invitation for the students, the teachers here, maybe to explore more this topic in the future. And just a quick reminder that protecting the planet is a responsibility of all of us. As, academic, as academicians, we can do more research, we can produce, produce more knowledge on the topic, and I believe that this will help us to fight climate change in a certain way. Thank you so much. If there is any questions or interests, on, you can send me any mail here. And uh, this was all for me. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, presentation, uh, perfect presentation. Uh, this subject and this case is uh, important uh, case uh, related to the uh, climate change. Uh, but uh, you can uh, add uh, extra dimension uh, to, to your uh, research uh, from my perspective. Uh, if you know, uh, there is already a water scarcity and the water sharing problem or accessing problem in uh, uh, Southern African Development Community region. Uh, and then the climate change directly affect the uh, water resources. Uh, because of that, uh, you can uh, you can uh, create a, a framework with three dimension: climate change, uh, climate change, water problem, and the food security. Uh, actually, this was the good research. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, and then now uh, let's Thank pass you. the other uh, presentation and the participant. Uh, he is Doukan Çetiner. He is from Bolu. Uh, he's my student. He's uh, graduated in uh, international relations department from uh, Bolu Bandizet Baysal University. Uh, and at the same time, uh, he's a researcher uh, in the uh, climate change and energy, uh, climate change and energy uh, center, studies center. Uh, and then the title of the Dokan's presentation is Deep Sea Mining. Uh, the decision-making mechanisms of the International Seabed Authority and the principle of equality. Actually, in the uh, opening uh, session, uh, we mentioned about the deep sea uh, mining and the uh, adverse uh, effects of the uh, climate change or the nature. Uh, let's uh, start, Dokan. Okay, well, thank you uh, for you, uh, my dear tutor, and for all the participants in this uh, two-day event. Uh, it's been a lovely experiment for all of us, I believe. And uh, if uh, everyone ready, 
I'm going to uh, start my presentation. It's about, as uh, you mentioned, deep sea mining, the decision making mechanism of the International Seabed Authority and the principle of equality. Uh, first of all, uh, as you can see in the on the left side, there is the little uh, sketch of the process of uh, deep sea mining. As you can see, there is a mining vessel and uh, a self-propelled miner and the gadgets in the middle. So this is how the deep sea mining is, um, a, this is how they are making the deep sea mining. And if we, if uh, I mentioned my, my uh, presentation's content, uh, it includes the definition of the climate change because uh, it is the necessity in my perspective and the tackling climate change globally, the link between climate change and the deep sea mining, deep sea mining and the International Seabed Authority, criticism towards the decision making mechanism of the International Seabed Authority and the conclusion. Uh, the fifth part is important because uh, when I take the subject, I wanted to make sure that uh, is there a problem that we see in the United Nations because as you know in the United Nations there are five member uh, permanent members and these members are the I don't know how you say but uh, they are the elite club they are the main authority and it, uh, nevertheless how many members they have it all depends on the, these five members so I want to see I wanted to see uh, if is there there's a problem in here too because the International Seabed Authority uh, just rules the this kind of situations. So we we'll begin with the definition of the climate change, and climate change refers to long-term shifts in the temperature patterns, weather conditions on Earth, primarily caused by human activities that release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These green house gases such as carbon dioxide and methane trap heat from the sun and contribute to the warming of the planet. The consequences of climate change include rising global temperatures, melting ice caps as we see now, sea level rise as we're going to see in the future, and extreme weather events, uh, the fires in the Canada, in our country, etc., and distributions to ecosystems and biodiversity. So in order to fix these problems, the international uh, system developed some kind of agreements and they have taken some steps in order to prevent it. As I said earlier, in response to the urgent need, of the need to address climate change, various steps have been taken at the international level to prevent further uh, further ex environmental degradation and mitigate the impacts of the climate change. These are, uh, as you can see here, there are the Rio Agreement, which is the first one, Kyoto Protocol, and finally the Paris Agreement. Uh, I'm going to explain them briefly. So the Rio Agreements, particularly the United Nations Framework Convention on the Climate Change, adapted in the uh, 92 laid the foundation for international cooperation on climate change, and it recognized the importance of the stabilizing greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere and called for the adoption measures to mitigate the climate change and support the vulnerable countries in adapting to its impacts. The second, uh, Kyoto, uh, one significant, it is a, a significant, a significant milestone uh, which adapted in 1997, uh, it established binding targets for industrial targets uh, countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, and it also in, uh, introduced mechanisms such as emission trading and the clean development, which discussed uh, a previous session, which was a, a live presentation. Uh, so the protocol played a significant role in shaping international climate policy and promoting global cooperation in addressing the climate change so the last one the paris agreement uh 
these previous agreements and protocols provided imper important groundwork and set the stage for subsequent developments, including this part Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement, adapted in 2015, builds upon the principles and objectives of the uh, United Nations Framework Convention on the Climate Change and represents a renewed commitment to addressing climate change. Uh, the main thing is about the main thing about that is to uh, limit the global warming to well below two degrees Celsius above the uh, pre-industrial levels. Uh, the agreement also highlights the importance of adaptation, finance, and technology transfer to the support developing countries in their climate action efforts. And other than that, we are going to continue with the link between the climate change and the deep sea mining. Uh, deep sea mining basically uh, has gained attention due to the increasing demand for minerals and metals, uh, particularly in the technology sector, because since the industrial revolutions, we just uh, attacking all these uh, raw materials and minerals. So these resources on the seabed, such as seafloor, uh, massive sulfides, cobalt rich crusts, and manganese nodules are not separate from the unique marine species and habitats that coexist in the areas. Uh, the extraction of the mineral resources from the deep sea environment raises concerns about the potential env environmental consequences and the need for effective government governance mechanism. And in order to establish that govern, uh, effective governance mechanism, the International Seabed Authority, the ISA, plays a crucial role in regulating human activities on the seabed outside the exclusive economic zones of the countries uh, and developing regulations accordingly. So, uh, one key subject in the deep sea mining is the economic aspect. The rising demand for the minerals and metals, driven, driven by the technology sector, has led to a resurgence of an interesting exploring uh, in exploring and extracting mineral resources from the seabed. The potential economic benefits of this deep sea mining are significant, but it is important to ensure that the decision making process considers equitable distribution of these benefits and avoids favoring privileged actors. And uh, the other one is uh, the geology of the seabed and different types of the mineral deposits. Seafloor massive sulfides, cobble rich crust, and manganese nodules among these resources in, of interest for deep sea mining. Understanding the geological characteristics and distribution of these deposits is a crucial for effective decision-making and sustainable resource extraction. Other than that, there is the environmental science, which is also a key subject in the deep sea mining. The extraction of mineral resources from the deep sea environment can have potential impacts, uh, and it is important to assess and mitigate these impacts to protect the unique marine species and habitats that coexists in that areas. The current system of the ISA requires mining companies to propose the localization, location and sizes of protected and restricted zones, but there are concerns that economically unimportant areas may be chosen instead of environmentally unimportant ones. In summary of that, before going to, into the criticisms, uh, deep sea mining is a complex and multidisciplinary subject that involves economics, geology, and environmental science. The decision-making me mechanism of the International Seabed Authority and the governance of the deep sea mining activities are important, which when considerations in ensuring equitable and sustainable uh, use of deep sea resources. Uh, it is crucial to balance economic interests with environmental con conserva conversation and protect the unique marine species and habitats in the deep sea environment. Improvements in the legal framework and governance mechanisms are necessary to ensure the long-term sustainability of the deep sea mining activities. So, this brings us to the last part, other than the uh, conclusions of the 
obviously, the criticisms towards the decision-making mechanism of the International Seabed Authority. Uh, so, the ISA is facing criticisms regarding its decision-making mechanisms uh, in the context of deep sea mining activities. One aspect from the, of the criticism is the concern that the decision-making process may not adequately prioritize environmental conversation and the protection of vulnerable marine ecosystems. The current system of the ISA requires mining companies, as we mentioned earlier, uh, to propose the locations and size to protected areas uh, because they want to protect these areas and these criticisms regarding the decision making mechanism of the isa and whether it is shaped in accordance with the principle of equity equity and for the benefits of all human humanity or if it is favors uh, privileged actors another criticism is that uh, related to the lack of transparency and inclusivity in the decision-making process of the ISA. Some stakeholders argue that the decision-making mechanisms favors the privileged actors and does not adequately involve the broader international community or take into the account to the uh, interests of all humanity. This raises concerns about equity of fairness and the governance of the deep sea mining activities. Furthermore, uh, there are concerns about the effectiveness of the ISA's regulations and enforcement mechanisms. The current legal fr framework for deep sea mining lacks common goals, principles, or standards, as well as the comprehensive geographic coverage. This can lead to the inconsistencies and gaps in the governance of the deep sea mining activities. Uh, additionally, there may be challenges in enforcing regulations and ensuring compl uh, compliance with the environmental protection measures. Uh, but uh, when we look at the, our first question, it was, uh, is it like the UN or not? So about that, the criticisms of the ISA decision-making mechanisms is not directly comparable to the uh, criticisms directed at the United Nations, as it has five permanent members. The criticism of the ISA more likely focuses on the issues of transparency, inclusivity, and uh, prioritization of environmental conversation, rather than the structure of the organization itself. However, both the UN and the ISA are subject to the scrutiny regarding their decision-making processes and the preparation of di diverse interests. In conclusion, the Seabed Authority plays a crucial role regulating the deep sea mining activities and balancing economic interests with environmental conversation. However, the decision-making activities and balancing economic interests, uh, sorry, however, the decision-making mechanism of the ISA has faced criticism regarding its prioritization, uh, prioritization and of environmental conversation, lack of transparency and inclusivity, and the effectiveness of the regulations and enforcement mechanisms. Uh, to ensure equitable and sustainable governance of deep sea mining, is it essential to address these criticisms and improve the decision-making process. This can be achieved through enhanced transparency, inclusive, inclusivity of diverse uh, stakeholders, and the development of comprehensive regulations that prioritize the protection of the vulnerable marine ecosystem. Because as you know, uh, the methane gas uh, that extracts when you are doing the mining activity uh, can have bad effects on the marine population of itself, like the dolphins, uh, etc. So, uh, these criticisms, the sol uh, solutions of these criticisms can be achieved through enhanced transparency, inclusivity, uh, sorry, 
By addressing these concerns, the ISA can effectively fulfill its mandate of regulating human activities on the seabed and ensure the long-term sustainability of the deep sea mining activities while preserving the unique marine species and habitats in the deep sea environment. Uh, so I want to close this presentation with the message of reduce, use, and recycle message. And sorry in advance if I make uh, spelling uh, mistakes, etc., because it's nearly 30 degrees and I'm wearing a jacket. So <laughs> thank you for all for listening to me. And that is all from me. Thank you for your uh, good presentation, Dokan. Uh, as you know, deep sea mining is a controversial topic and uh, uh, a, and a dilemma uh, or dilemma. Uh, on the one hand, it is an important area uh, in the fight against climate change. And on the other hand, there is a risk of accelerating climate change. Uh, at the same time, there are uh, various uh, questions. Uh, such as who will uh, who will search who uh, how to use the found mi mineral uh, who will use it or how to protect nature during mining activities uh, and then forever uh, at the at the same time we should not forget that um, we need the mines uh, in uh, deep sea or the oceans uh, so uh, this is an important issue and this is an important topic. This is an important climate-related issue that needs to be studied. Uh, because of that, uh, uh, thank you for your good and uh, crucial uh, subject uh, and the presentation. Uh, let's pass the uh, conclusion part or the discussion part. Uh, if it is okay for everything, every everyone, um, uh, if there is a question about the two presentations, uh, you can ask. Is there any question? Uh, so you can close the session. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Okay. Uh, we just have to uh, remind one or two things. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you in my parts uh, for all of you to uh, make this happen. And please uh, don't forget to follow the Jet Center's uh, mm -hmm. social media accounts. We are doing daily posts on the for, for, the, future, new... for the future activities. Yeah, for sure. And uh, please, uh, we have a forum that, uh, in order to collect the data, and, form. yeah, to use in the future activities for us to develop ourselves and uh, make a better uh, activities in the future. So I'm going to drop a link in the chat in a second. So don't forget to do that. And thanks. Thank you for uh, thank you for listening. Ee, i̇sterseniz bu arada e, artık son sesyonumuzu da e, böylece bitirdik. E, i̇sterseniz kapanışı da beraber bir şekilde yapalım e, ve böylece kongremizi de bitirelim. E, Fatih Hocam e, istersen e, beraber bir kapanışımızı da gerçekleştirelim. Tabii ki. E, Ali de burada galiba. E, şimdi... Biz tabii ki benim ekantım var. Niye böyle çıktı? Ses nereden geldi? Herhalde şimdi biraz daha iyi. Ee, öncelikle bütün katılımcılara teşekkür ediyorum ben. Gerçekten iki gün boyunca iki webinar artı bütün sunumlar olmak üzere e, son derece iyi e, sunumlar yapıldı. Ee, bence önemli bir akademik e, etkinlik olduğunu düşünüyorum. Ee, örneğin şey keyifle izledik. Ee, bizden önceki birazcık da uzun süren ama 
E, oldukça iyi bir konular da çok iyiydi. E, belli ki e, önemli araştırmaların sonuçları bunlar. E, o yüzden ben teşekkür ediyorum. E, sizlerle çok anlamlı oldu bu kongre. E, size açılış konuşmasında söylediğim gibi bir e, WhatsApp grubu oluşturduk. E, bunun oluşturmamızın sebebi birincisi e, bu tür etkinliklerimize katılan insanlar belli ki bu konulara odaklanıyorlar. O yüzden bir network oluşturmak istiyoruz. E, biz interdisipliner çalışılması gerektiğini düşünüyoruz bu konuların. O yüzden de biz ne kadar fazla uzmanı ya da uzman adayını ya da bu konuda çalışmak isteyen e, öğrencilerimizi bir araya getirirsek karşılıklı etkileşimimizin o kadar iyi olacağını düşünüyoruz. E, bunun dışında da sizlere gelecek e, organizasyonlarımızı ya da sizin önerileriniz olabilir, eleştirileriniz, önerileriniz, katkılarınız bunlar için bu platformu e, kullanacağız. Ee, umarım daha da artarak, daha da e, etki, her etkinliğimizi biraz daha arttırarak e, devam edeceğiz. E, Fatih Hocam sen neler söylersin? Evet hocam teşekkür ederim. E, gerçekten çok keyifli ve bilgilendirici bir kongreydi. E, yani ben kendi adıma e, notlar da aldım. Bu arada bunu da ifade edeyim. E, hem sunumları izledim, e, sunumlarla ilgili notlar aldım. Hem de e, oturumlarda... E, bu e, formlar Google üzerinden yolladığımız bir değerlendirme formu vardı. Onun doldurulmasını istiyorduk. Onlarla ilgili dönükler de gelmeye başladı. E, ya yani Şöyle değerlendirdiğimde tabii bunun bir raporunu oluşturacağız. E, bu raporu merkezimiz sayfasında e, yayınlarsak mesela altında bulabilirler. E, yani belki birkaç gün sürebilir tabii bunu hazırlamak ama e, ileriki vakitlerde bu raporu da okumalarını e, isteriz katılımcılarımızın ve dinleyicilerimizin. E, bu raporda neler olacak? Şöyle ki yani bu kongre yapıldı. E, peki ne oldu? Ne çıktı? E, neler konuşuldu burada? Bunların bir e, özetini ve biraz da detaylandırarak belki sunacağız. E, bu çerçevede şunu söyleyebilirim e, belki. Bakıldığında özellikle e, bu konuların herkesin bahsettiği disiplinler arası bir bakışla ele alması gerektiği, insanın burada çok değerli olduğu, ee, yine aynı şekilde e, sürdürülebilirlik anlayışının e, hem iklim değişikliği açısından hem enerji açısından e, önem arz ettiği ve e, bir şekilde bunların birbirleriyle bağlantılı olduğu konuları hep, hepsinde vurgulandı. E, özellikle bakıldığında yine bu konular çerçevesinde hala e, belli bağlamlarda eksikliklerin olduğu ve bunların tamamlanması gerekli. Yani eğitim bağlamında da olsun. İşte veya e, diğer sağlık, iktisat veya uluslararası ilişkiler bağlamında da bunlar vurgulandı. Bunları tabii toparlayıp güzel bir rapor haline getireceğiz. E, bunu da e, merkezimiz sayfasında yayınladığımızda herkes ulaşabilir olacaktır. Aynı zamanda e, bir şeyden daha bahsedeyim hocam. E, bunun sonucunda da e, lütfen e, tam metinlerinizi hazırlayın. E, çünkü e, bir ISBN bir e-book şeklinde bazılarını bazılarını ise yine bünyemizde kurduğumuz e, dergi çerçevesinde mutlaka değerlendireceğiz. E, yayınlanması önemli. E, yani çünkü önemli araştırmaların olduğunu düşünüyoruz. E, aynı zamanda biz e, tabii kendimiz de akademisyen olduğumuz için e, bu tür seviyelerde özellikle yüksek lisans ve doktor öğrencilerimiz için yayınların önemli olduğunu düşünüyoruz biz. E, o yüzden bunu da söyleyelim. Bu yayın için de bir deadline koyacağız tabii ki. Yani tam metinler için. E, bu tam metinler onu da size yine WhatsApp gruplarından ve e-mailden göndeririz. E, o döneme kadar e, bu e, şeyleri de bekliyoruz. Onu da e, bir arada söyleyeyim istedim. Bir de şeyi de söyleyelim hocam. E, bu sürdürülebilir fikirler Adı altında bir programımız var. Ee, yine internet sayfamızdan ve YouTube hesabımızdan oralara ulaşabilirsiniz. Ee, bu kongrenin de yine bir değerlendirmesini orada e, evet. İlk, bir bölümde yapalım. bölümde yapacağız. Yapalım. İlk bölümde yapacağız. Evet. Ee, oradan da yine hem e, bundan sonraki süreçleri hem de e, bu kongre ile ilgili değerlendirmemize yine oradan ulaşabilirsiniz. Ee, söyleyeceklerimiz bu kadar. Gayet Hı-hı. güzel ve e, deneyimlerle dolu ve bilgilendirici bir kongre oldu. Ben bu çerçevede hem 
merkez adına tüm katkıda bulunan arkadaşlarım, hocalarımı hem de e, sunumlarıyla e, dinleyerek ve soru sorarak e, katkıda bulunan tüm e, dinleyicilerimize ve katılımcılarımıza e, teşekkür ediyorum. Hocam bu arada e, Evanil de bir e, söz almak istiyormuş. Seni dinliyoruz. Tamam. Aa, teşekkür ederim hocam. Aslında bir sorunum var. Aa, yani yüksek lisans öğrenci olarak üniversiteye önemli olduğu için söylüyorum. Bu konferansan bir katilim sertifikası gibi bir şey olacak mı? Tabii ki. Tabii ki. Biz şimdi e, imzalayıp sizin e-mail adreslerinize göndereceğiz. Ee, o da birkaç gün sürebilir. Endişe etmeyin. Ee, mutlaka katılım sertifikası gelecek. Tamam. Çok teşekkür ederim. Rica ediyorum. Başka evet. sorusu ya da katkıda bulunmak isteyen e, negatif, pozitif e, sonuç itibariyle eleştirileri olan yani sonuç olarak bir sonraki etkinliğimiz için bunları da değerlendirebiliriz. E, var mı bir söz almak isteyen acaba? O zaman e, başta sizlere, katılımcılarımıza ve e, yine tabii ki biz teşekkür ederiz Adem Bey. E, Karmer'e, bizim e, kariyer merkezimize, Bolu Avantiz Et Baysal Üniversitesi'nin aynı zamanda da merkez olarak Fatih Hocama, Ali Hocama ve Doğukan kardeşime de e, teşekkürlerimi iletiyorum. Gayet e, güzel olduğunu düşünüyorum. E, Nisanur teşekkürler. E, hepinize e, yani kendinize iyi bakın. Bir sonraki e, etkinliğimizde görüşmek üzere. Görüşmek üzere.